ladies and gentlemen, the class of 2011. Thank you for being here this morning. Most of you have woken up early, driven or flown, and postponed or canceled other engagements to join us today to finally watch 18 years worth of raising walk across the stage. And we have been going full speed ahead for the past four years. So before we set sail for college, let's savor this moment. We deserve a break. So for five seconds, let's just make time stop. Congratulations, 2011. We made it. In her graduation speech, a valedictorian in California confessed her regret of dedicating herself strictly to academics and how she wished she had put more balance in her life. She ended her speech by declining her acceptance at Stanford University to go to San Francisco State and become a quote unquote starving musician. And I sympathized with her because it would have been nice to study less, live more, and maybe learn about the opposite gender. <laughs> I considered just delivering the confessions of a salutatorian and talking about my regrets. But I realized this is not how I feel. And I know I speak for the rest of 2011. This is not how we feel. We haven't lost our lives because we've dedicated ourselves to pursuing academics. Actually, we've made our best friends in our hardest classes. Because when we're all trying to barely pass Mr. Valentine's AP Literature class, we meet up in the library somehow and make a massive study group and get kicked out for being more than four to a table. And all of a sudden, we realize that our desperation has made us seek help in people we've never spoken to, and we bond. And what's amazing is, as hard as we work, none of us are strictly dedicated to academics. The beauty of Episcopal is that it won't let us become like that. In class, we've got people like Murphy, setting high jump records and leading the Community Service Council. We possess extraordinary talents, like Mia, who has flown around the world to place an international kickboxing competition. Or Jeremy and Wesley, who have self-produced some of the most amazing rap and hip-hop music I've ever heard. So, good job, guys. <laughs> but the people in this class are not only amazing in their achievements, but in their personalities. Tammy may be known for her inspirational work ethic and her humility, but I'll remember her for being someone I can always confide in. And Robert may be the Rotary Exchange Club student of choice, but to me, he's the unconditional friend who can always make me smile. And Julie may be the band president and honor student, but I thank her for putting up with me the longest and for always <laughs> giving me a reality check when my head is up in the clouds of academia. And I'll never forget how Rachel Ann, the lead in both of this year's plays, caught me in the hall to tell me, you look down, let's do lunch. Yeah, we're an extraordinary class. And this is where I would tell you all that from this point on, we begin changing the world but I don't need to. Because for the past four years, that's exactly what we've been doing. Whether it's tutoring kids in underprivileged schools, sharing the beauty of art with disabled children, or hosting fundraising sports events, this school has shaped us to funnel our talents into some of the most high impact community service projects. We've reached incredible levels, but we couldn't have done it without our teachers. So we thank them, not only for the academics, but for Mr. Fifth's math class dance lesson and musical interlude and for Mr. Ritter's humorous interaction with Garrett Peterson. And Mr. Levinson, I know I complained a lot about your class, but it made me a better student. And Day of Respect this year was awesome. And I'll never forget Mr. Crannell imitating a crazy book character by crawling around the classroom, or the column outside Mr. <coughs> Kress's room, or Mr. Harrell and his originality and his wisdom and his love for technology, or how Ms. Edwards was always there to help me with both my academic and personal struggles. And I'll never forget the coach's inclusive attitudes, the Buck Center staff's perpetual friendliness, and how the security guards, as intimidating as they look in their uniform, are actually pretty nice people. <laughs> so now, 2011, that we've made it this far, I challenge us to set the world on fire. Let's embrace the potential, not fear it. We have tendencies to avoid taking risks out of fear of disappointing ourselves, or even worse, disappointing others. But life never makes sense, so even taking the safe route can lead to unexpected consequences. Why live in fear? I never want to look back on life and say, I wish I tried. And I know not every risk is going to end with a success. Pain is inevitable. We see pain as a sign of failure, and failure as a trademark of inferiority. But the truth is, 
The most successful people are the ones who have failed the most. They have hurt and cried and then picked up the pieces and moved on. And that's what it means to live life to the fullest. So with that in mind, I challenge us to dream big and push ourselves to the maximum. Don't do what everyone else wants you to do because the only true success is full self-actualization. Instead, find who you are, find who you want to be and run with it. Do like that girl in California and be a musician if that's what you want to do. In 20 years, her children will be listening to her records. In 20 years, let's not tell our children how we wish we had acted to stop the crisis in Africa. Instead, let's tell them how we ended the genocide and the famine and the lack of water. So, mom and dad, I'm sorry to disappoint you. I won't be staying in state because it's warmer and you can do my laundry when I have finals. <laughs> I choose to attend instead the school with the toughest workload and the worst weather. Because in 20 years, I don't want to tell my kids that I didn't dare attend the school, but that I graduated from it and I made the difference I wanted to make. So before I go, to the class of 2011, a message from the band All Time Love. We jump high. We let go. We've got more than we know. My friends are a different breed. My friends are everything to me. Make it last, take it slow. We've got it all figured out for now. So let us live our life without a doubt. The confessions of the salutatorian are non-existent. I have no regrets. We have no regrets. Let's keep it that way. One, one, how it's done. Thank you.